Yeah. Uh, do you think dry fits for betas? Uh, nah, no. Nah. No. It's it's kind of a smart move. Yeah, but sometimes the beta move is smart, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with... Like, beta move is not punching a dude in the face who just said, you're a pussy. But if alpha move is punching them in the face. Yeah, sure. Not really the smartest decision. Two different things we're talking about, though. Yeah, about the same. <laughs> and the material of your pants and <laughs> confrontation? <laughs> You might be right. You know? I'm wearing some dry fit shorts right now, so I wasn't going to call myself. So I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to shut the fuck up. Which, by the way, when was the last time you ever saw my thighs? Dude, you got nice thighs. <laughs> They're really white. But you I... walked up today in those shorts, and I said, mm, you got some nice thighs. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you need to show off them wheels a little more, dude. <laughs> I mean, he's got little thighs, but they're nice. Yeah, you know. But I got, I got, uh, we're talking like tires here. I got 32s on me, you know, <laughs> with no ass. Uh, <laughs> so I've been working on it. A lot of, lot of glute bridges, a lot of, uh, you know, hip extensions. I look like I'm fucking at the gym all the time. <laughs> you do the machine? Oh, uh, dude, all the time. The, yeah. And then I squeeze up. And, I, and here's the thing, dude. I use, like, the painful face when I work out. Like, the, you know. <laughs> What's the face? <laughs> and, dude, so I'll be at the top of a glue bridge on the machine. I'll make eye contact with someone. I'm like, Ugh. But squeezer, and I'm shaking, dude. My legs are shaking. I'm like, yeah. And sometimes I talk to myself, like, you old. You old. <laughs> you know? It literally looks like I'm trying to hold back a nut, dude. And, and uh, some people look away. Some people keep looking at me in the eye. <laughs> you know? I was like, I'll tell you where my temperature's at. <laughs> I've been nice, I get money, I'm on my suck again. Trying to stack a little dub, trying to catch a win. And next time I drop a coupe, it's gonna be a twin turbo. Always been a G, but I ain't never been a herb, though. Well, hey guys, welcome back to a Millennial Mentality Podcast. I am your host, Nick Agnelli, here with my co host, Peter Price. Yep. And this is a boys only episode. Yes. Thank you guys for watching, listening, viewing, and subscribing. If you could tell your friends or family about us, it means the world. We're uh, over a year now doing this. We love doing it, and we just want to continue to grow, and we cannot grow without your support. So thank crazy. you so it's been much a year. for that. It's been a year, man. And um, I feel like it's been a long year in a fast... I feel like that's always time, though. Yeah. Like, time, sometimes when you think back to it, goes by so fast. But it was also like... I feel like it was a while ago. Mm -hmm. um, we were two way different people, and it's crazy that next year, what is it going to be, you know? Yeah. Uh, are you going to be a dad, you know? Possibly. Oh, well. Maybe. <laughs> maybe <laughs> in Prognetto. Uh, maybe you. Maybe. No, yeah. no, no, sir. Bob. We're not pulling that goal yet. Um, but uh, thank you guys so much again. Um, this week's episode, uh, it's going to kind of be a little bit of a catch-up, a little bit of where we're at, uh, Pete's at, I'm at, and uh, a little bit of jokes, too. So, um, again, thanks for watching. So, Pete, I'm going to kick off to you. Um, what was <laughs> I just found this in my pocket. Um, so that is a round of a gun. Yeah. Um, empty. Mm -hmm. and the casing, they call yes. that. So Pete and I went shooting this morning. Yep. Pete, tell him how good I am. Nick's, <laughs> Nick impressed me. Nick did good. <laughs> Nick did good. Uh, I impressed myself. All yeah. right. So in reality, it's a pretty simple thing. You put the gun in the hand and you pull the trigger. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, it's you got the power of God in your hands, you know? It's a little <laughs> scary sometimes yeah. when you think about it, like... You know, you could literally turn around and just kill someone, you know? Yeah. And, and I was standing behind you, so yeah. it's weird that that was the thought that was going through well, your head. The thought didn't go through my head, but what I'm saying is, like, you know, <laughs> it, it's, like, it's scary, dude, you know? And, uh, you know, so my defenses are on the whole time, you know? I yeah. had a concealed carry in the concealed carry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... It, it's fun, you know. Uh, I never shot fun. guns my entire life. This was actually my third time shooting a gun. <laughs> you did pretty good, man. And uh, and you know, I try to be confident with it. Uh, I still got a lot of learning to do with it, but it's fun. Um, shooting guns are fun, and and this isn't saying we're gun toting crazy motherfuckers, but uh, we believe in our Second Amendment rights, and we are freely to use those. So, mm -hmm. um, I, so I don't know how this wound up in my pocket though. It it just like you the know the physics of that is kind of crazy. It landed in there. Yeah, I mean if that if you like actually committed a crime, that's not a great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they pat you down in the jail cell. They're like, oh, hey, hey what's this? Where'd buddy? this come from? Yeah. And you're like, oh, just a bird, you know. Um, so uh, next yeah. time we got to check our pockets when we leave, yeah. but. 
Um, so that was fun. Uh, mm-hmm. Last night, uh, my wife threw a surprise birthday party for me. Yeah. So that Happy was... Happy early birthday. Thank you, man. I turned 27 on Wednesday, August 24th. Shout out, Live the Barber. We had the same birthday. Yeah, that's right. Leo twins. Um, <laughs> Virgo, whatever the fuck we are. Uh, depends where the moon is. Um, shout out, Erica Nash- <laughs> Natalie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but... Um, but no, so my birthday's on Wednesday. I'm turning 27, which is a crazy number. I feel like 27, you're kind of like, that's pretty old, you know? Late uh, 20s? You're in your late 20s, officially. Like, yeah. you, you, you're in that chapter. 26, you're still, like, fairly near 25. So um, I'm turning 27. Uh, it's a really kind of cool feeling for me. Um, I mean, I'm such in a flow of life. Someone asked me to do something on Wednesday this week, and I was like, yeah, cool. I'm talking about next Wednesday, and um, I looked at the calendar. I'm like, oh, fuck, that's my birthday. So I'm a little busy in life right now. Uh, my younger years, like, I loved, like, the, oh, my God, it's your birthday. Hit you up. So I don't really care too much anymore, you yeah. know. I just want to be loved. And that's what last night was. Last night was absolutely perfect. Everyone I loved was around me. I felt special. So that was great. But uh, Do you want to year- tell them about our birthday plans that we've had for a little bit for you? We're gonna uh, we're gonna watch Anchorman on Wednesday. Um, you could be sober. You could microdose. You could macrodose. You could be on edibles. You could smoke or just be sober. You know. But <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna bring your you- guns. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Leave your guns out. Uh, yeah, leave it. <laughs> Especially some of you out there. You might be rolling up <laughs> with a lot. But uh, so we're going to watch Anchorman. Uh, it's the greatest movie, second greatest movie ever made. And um, and just laugh. So that's really where I'm at in life right now. Like, I don't want to go buy bottles and all that shit. I just want to have, like, my version of fun in life right now. So, um, but it, it's a really cool feeling for me turning 27. I feel like uh, this past year I've made a lot of steps to kind of fill that role of maturity of I guess getting older Mm -hmm. and so I'm kind of like happy and ready for it um it was a weird thing I heard the other day you know you know remember as a kid growing up you just wanted to be older like yeah I just want to be 16 I want to be able to drive or I want to be 14 I want to be able to you know go to the mall by myself (laughs) and uh and then 18 I want to be able to like buy nicotine if I want or whatever the fuck and um I think the last one was 25 I want to be able to rent a car at 25 uh (laughs) But then, you know, you get to an age, you're like, oh, I just want everything to slow down. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, I want everything to, uh, you know, I want to be able to hit a pause button because I know, I don't know what decade of my life is going to be the best. You know, if I were to picture it, I, I hope my 30s and 40s are. Mm. Um, that's kind of the way I'm lining my life up to be. But um, I think the 20s were pretty fucking fun, though. Yeah. 20s were pretty crazy. And Is this going to be like your first sober birthday? Mm, last year I was sober. Last year Were I was you? sober because last year it was in one of the escapades of me trying to lose weight. Uh, mm. It was my birthday, so not for a sober birthday, but um, but because last year I was on the cusp of like trying to be more mature, but still kind of having those. What did you do for your birthday last year? Went to Utiki, and oh. it was on Tuesday last year, and and uh, which that's crazy how it's literally just one day. That's next, how the calendar works. Yeah. That's kind of crazy, though. It's like, it's crazy that it's not like two days, you know, or like every other day. True. Um, but, or the same day, you yeah. know. But, well, well, let's be honest. Calendars? Yeah, who made that? Right. The, we're, you believe in them? We're following what the Aztecs made. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a few leaps in technology here, okay? And we're just going to follow what the rocks said, you know? Is that how it works? Dude, I don't know how... <laughs> That is just crazy, bro. And then how long they've been following months, right? So, yeah. like, King Edward the First in the year 1100, was he in, like, June? Or was that, like, Unkataka month, you know? And it's they only had four months, you know? Because they might have just done it by the seasons. This is the cold month, yeah. you know? But it's winter. Mm-hmm. Um so calendars, I don't know. I don't know if that's fake or not. But <laughs> <laughs> we unravel something that's fake every week. But start thinking about calendars more. <laughs> and and if someone says you're off, and say you're off, <laughs> because I follow my own calendar. <laughs> don't follow this advice with your boss. But <laughs> you don't show up to work on Monday, and they're like, "Listen, this is actually Sunday for me. <laughs> I go reverse on this calendar." Uh, but but no don't do that uh but but no so i feel really happy at this point in life forward this to your employees yeah i uh 
I'm excited for the next steps. I'm excited for what 28, 27, 29, and 30 bring me. And uh, I don't know why I jumped to 28 there, but um, <laughs> the next four years bring me. And uh, I think I just want to continue this kind of this path I'm on. You know, I'm definitely aged up this past year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like doing different things like shooting guns on Sunday, not feeling hungover, and yeah. and uh, focusing a lot on my work and, and my wife. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, uh, what you want in life kind of shrinks the older you get, I think, you know, and like just, you know, being really invested in one, like, you know, when you're 21, you're trying to talk to like 10 girls and putting all that energy out to 10. Now I'm just multiplied that and just to one, you know, so just doubling down on everything that I got going on and just having fun with it. I want these years to be fun. So speaking of watching Anchorman and things that you want, um, do you want to tell the people about your latest tattoo idea? So it is official after a uh, long deliberation of, I'm going to get a 10-inch Ron Burgundy on my right thigh. <laughs> 10-inch. Was that, is that funny? I just like that you knew the that dimensions. Funny, funny. Yeah, 10 by 4. <laughs> and uh, the Pete, I believe in him, right? Yeah. He's saying, I started working on it last night. He's saying this is a hard project. It's tough. But it's Very basically, custom. it's going to be Ron Burgundy in a jean jacket, sleeveless, uh, jean shorts, um, steel toe boots, and he's on heelys, and he's heeling, and he's smoking a cigar, and he's puffing the cigar, uh, so a cloud of smoke is going to be getting puffed, and it's going to be going towards my balls. Right, um, so this is on his thigh. So it's going to be on my thigh, upper groin, inner groin, and uh, I just, I can't wait for it. It's going to be a piece of art, you know, it's going to be Picasso-esque. It's going to be, um, I think, Caso-esque, up there with the yeah, <laughs> Pete Caso esque. And uh, I'm excited for it. And I think, uh, like, a lot of my tattoos, all of them have just, like, really deep meaning. And I just kind of want a tattoo for something. I mean, Ron Burgundy's pretty deep. Yeah, this might know? be the like, deepest. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you really go down his life and what he created and who he is, <laughs> um, I mean, the man was blind, right? Do you remember when he went blind? When Baxter got thrown off the bridge? Oh, that's and true. And then he yeah. went blind. Yeah, okay. Uh, but he communicated to dolphins? Yeah. Okay. Something like <laughs> we gotta that. We got to rewatch the movie. Yeah. So that story is just, it's in- inspirational. Yeah. I cry. And uh, so figure out your favorite character, whether it's hentai porn or uh, whatever it is, Pokemons, and get them tattooed on you. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good idea. And if you need a good tattoo artist, I know a guy. <laughs> this was all infomercial for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank yeah. you. Um, and so that's going to be happening probably in the next, like, six days or so. Uh, <laughs> Stay tuned. Uh, but, Pete, what's been going on with you, man? How you been? I've been doing okay. Um, still dealing with the migraines and stuff, but trying to figure it out. I uh, got an MRI done recently, and fortunately, uh, the results of that came back normal, which just kind of shows, like, I don't have any brain tumors or cancer or like leaking spinal fluid, like nothing Mm. life threatening or anything crazy like that. But I do have like migraine patterns, um, which was sort of expected just because I've been dealing with these migraines every day for like the last going on four months now. So I've been taking like daily migraine medication for the last month and hasn't really been helping because I've still been getting these headaches Mm -hmm. every day. So they actually just switched me to a different medication. Um, which is a shot that I have to give myself once a month. Mm -hmm. Um, I just started that yesterday, so I gave myself this shot. Uh, It might take like a week or two to kick in, Mm. Um, but apparently this one's like the good stuff. The the goat, yeah. Yeah, so I'm kind of stoked. I'm hoping that this maybe will do the trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, And you don't feel horrible today. No, not too bad. Doing okay. Uh, Yesterday wasn't too bad either. I was at your surprise party, which was good. Um, All right. The day before that was a little rough. Yeah. But I hadn't done the shot yet. But I hadn't done the shot yet. Right. Uh, Actually, the day before that was real rough. Yeah, I went to the ER the day before. Yeah. They hopped me up on a bunch of drugs, which helped temporarily. So compared to the day before, we're doing real good. We're right doing now. good, yeah. yeah. Um, Hell yeah. So we're figuring it out, you know. Um, I'm also doing... so. If you watched, like, the previous episode about, like, the cause of all of this, I, I think it's all due to the apartment I was living in that had black mold. Um, next week, on Tuesday, I'm going to get this ozone treatment mm-hmm. where they take a bunch of blood out of my body. They treat it with ozone, which kills mold. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and then they put the blood back in my body. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Pretty intense. Um, so I'm going to get two of those treatments over the next couple weeks, the first one being on Tuesday. Hell yeah. Um, so that's another step in the right direction, hopefully. Uh, get the ozones out of you. Yeah, well, the ozone in me, I guess. Uh, in uh, get the mold out of me. What is ozone? Um, good question. I don't really know. Because is, is it relatable to the ozone layer? Uh, you know, it's the same word, yeah. but, uh, you know, I don't think it comes from there. Yeah, no. Um, Could it, be. Maybe they go up and get, like, a jar of air. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then it's, they bring it down. It, ozone, like, kills everything, yeah. basically. Yeah. Uh, which sounds a little scary that mm-hmm. they're going to be putting it in my body, but mm-hmm. um, apparently it's safe and healthy. Um, so, yeah, they're going to take a bunch of blood out of my body, treat it with this ozone, put the blood back in my body, and apparently that blood will have no mold in it. Um, and I'm going to have to do that a couple times to like purge. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and the fact that I've gotten all these, I've gotten CAT scans and MRIs and all of that has shown, I don't have tumors. I don't have cancer. I don't like all the, the other major concerns are clear. So it's like kind of pretty obvious that the mold is probably the trigger. So maybe the the double down of the new shot plus the mold treatments. Hopefully we we might be in the clear. I've seen that movie, Osmosis Jones. Yeah. yeah. I know what happens, you know? <laughs> and when you think of the body that way, there yeah. is an internal battle going on right yeah, now. Yeah, right, exactly. I mean, literally World War Three is to- going on in your body. Exactly. And these, But we're bringing in the troops, mm-hmm. you know? Like, the troops that just showed up, uh-oh. Well, what you're saying is sort of accurate. That's, like, kind of how the mold, I guess, works is, like, it, there's microtoxins or something like that, and they basically are, like, attacking the cells in my body. Yeah. No, they brought in... That's Russia, Ukraine. You yeah, know? and uh, now you're you're fighting back. Yeah, you know, not to get political. So yeah, we're figuring it out. Uh, but you know, taking it day by day, not doing too bad. Yeah, okay. We're here. All right. So, good energy towards Pete. Good energy. Yes, yes. Um, so with that, you're still doing seventy five hard. Uh, so up until this point, I have been doing seventy five hard. Um, but I've been wanting to talk to you about it because. I think I want to make some adjustments to the program, which, uh, you know, being familiar with 75 Hard, I kind of realize one of the stipulations is there's no deviations from the program. Um, So I kind of realize with wanting to make these adjustments, I'm like kind of going to no longer be doing 75 Hard. But that being said, I still want to stick to a program um, because I do, I value like the discipline Mm -hmm. and the structure. I see the benefits in that. Um, but I just don't necessarily think that like this program in particular is like the most beneficial for me yeah. necessarily. Um, and why is that? Uh, yeah, at the moment I'm like 140 pounds, which mm-hmm. is like the lightest I've ever been, um, in a long time. And, uh, I just don't necessarily know that it's like the best allocation of my time. Um, in the sense of like my body and my metabolism, I don't think it benefits a ton from like two 45 minute workouts a day. Um, so I want to cut back to just one 45 minute workout every day. Mm-hmm. Still going to drink a gallon of water a day. Uh, let me pull up my list so I can recite it accurately. Um, so I still want to stick to a program every day. And if anyone has watched the episode where I did 75 soft, I don't want to call this 75 soft because, to be honest, if I go back to when I did that, my and now like doing the this first like 30 days or so of 75 hard, my 75 soft program was like harder than 75 yeah. hard was because and I designed it that way. I wanted it to be challenging and but it was catered towards the goals that I actually have for myself. You know, um, fitness isn't something I struggle with. Um, my diet isn't something I struggle with. That's something I've, I've always eaten relatively clean. I've always been on a pretty good workout regimen. Um, with these migraines being an issue the last few months, I drink a crazy amount of water Mm -hmm. just as a preventative measure. So like those couple things, like aren't really a hard thing for me to check those boxes. Um, but the drinking, uh, that was something in the early stages yeah. that, you know, that was something I wanted to cut out of my lifestyle. Um, you know, now it being about like six to eight months where I haven't really had any alcohol mm-hmm. at all. Um, <clears throat> I, that, and it's really not even a thought, like mm-hmm. I have no interest in drinking. Um, and that's something I plan on continuing. 
So the program that I kind of want to design for myself, and okay, so like I was saying before, I don't want to call this 75 Soft because I feel like I'm almost roasting myself by calling it 75 Soft. Um, Just a lifestyle. I want to design a program that is more sustainable. You know, it's not something that... You're going to get done with 76, five days, 76 days, you're just going to... And then go on a bender, right? Um, I want it to just be, you know, something that I can do every day, basically for the rest of my life, Mm -hmm. you know, a program that I can stick to for good. Um, So working out every day, drinking a gallon of water, writing a gratitude list, which is something that if you guys are, you know, regular listeners, you know, is very important to me. Um, Reading one page minimum of a book a day. Which may sound silly when you first hear it, but uh, it's not necessarily saying you have to only read one page. Yeah. You can read 10 pages if you are feeling yourself that day, but just the bare minimum requirement is one page. Uh, posting a podcast clip every day, mm-hmm. um, which, again, the, the point of this is to cater towards my goals for my life, you know? And um, since starting this 75 Hard being so dialed on, I need to check these boxes for 75 hard. I haven't written a gratitude list because I'm more focused on, I got to get my workouts in. I got to read my 10 pages. And then I got to also do my tattoo appointments for the day. Am I getting my drawings done and, you know, worried about everything else? Um, I'm putting basically everything else on the back burner. So I'm, I'm, you know, not giving enough attention to the things that actually matter to me because I'm too focused on completing this program just for the sake of completing the program, you know? Um, so bringing the gratitude list back is very important. Posting a podcast clip is important because, you know, we were we were on this trajectory of, like, really good growth for a long time because we were putting a lot of effort into being consistent with our posting, and that's kind of gotten put on the back burner because both of us have been pretty busy with work and now busy with 75 Hard and, and a lot of our lifestyle changes. Um, so posting a podcast clip every day. I recently went to the dentist, so I've been really anal about my oral hygiene. Um, so flossing every day, uh, taking vitamins. It's a weird one, but I'll take it. You, it, you know, it doesn't hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flossing every day. It doesn't hurt, no. Taking vitamins and supplements every day. Scrubbing the balls. Re- <laughs> <laughs> Got my balls checked the other day. Need some scrubbing. <laughs> Reaching out to someone and showing love. Mm-hmm. Um, Beaten. <laughs> it's not on there Maybe you need more beats, Pete You ain't even beat much No, I don't beat much That could be it, dude Maybe there's a big stoppage on I-10 <laughs> Maybe you get that flowing a little bit You know, it might be like Jenny Springs now But <laughs> That was too much um, uh, But I'm gonna So that's what I've got yeah. on here so far I'm gonna continue to think about it And this is gonna kind of be like a, a growing list Where as my goals change, uh, the list will grow. Um, but again, I want it to be standards, standards, and um, goal. And, and things that I stick to every day, and uh, and not really put like a, a limit on how many days I'm going to do it for, and really just make it a lifestyle that I stick to for good. Um, it's and it, have it catered towards my my personal goals. Several things here. I just read a book by this guy named Ed Milet. It was called Go One More. I'll, I got to give it to you. It's great. But uh, so standards are what you graduate to, in my opinion, when you get through discipline. Once once discipline is really nailed in, and you have discipline and structure to your life, then your standards change, and you graduate to that and what your standards are. Because ultimately, goals are not made off of challenges and this or that. They're made off of the standards you have in your life. You know, you do 75 hard and you complete that. You may, you could be doing much better in business, but it's not like you're, you know, you've quantifiably jumped in business. or I mean, your weight is better, but it doesn't mean you're a skinny guy. You still have more work to do. And so after you graduate and you have this baby discipline, you have to raise your standards to meet that. And I think with 75 Soft, you got the discipline, right? And then now, with that discipline, you want to start putting standards in your life that you hold across the board. And that doesn't mean if it's a Sunday or a Monday or Tuesday, because standards are not bred off of motivation and inspiration. They're bred off of this is what I do. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, Your standards and then how you show your identity to the world. And so... 
that. I think the biggest thing is with 75 hard and kind of with the branches of it, you're able to really depict fast where you're lacking in your life, right? So like for instance, if reading is really fucking frustrating and hard to you, maybe you need to start educating yourself more in life. Maybe you need to start pushing the boundaries of what you know and what you could do professionally and, and learn more in your life or maybe drinking a gallon of water maybe you're fucking chronic dehydrated bro every day you're not drinking enough you have one little water bottle and that's it or like for pete maybe it was like the not necessarily going out but having a casual beer or two a night and oh fuck i can't do that anymore mm -hmm. so it will weed out really fast the sector of your life that you're lacking in and so even if you have discipline or, you know you go to the gym every day no matter what or you usually eat clean right but you're locking the other few it's going to weed those out and it's going to push those <clears throat> so now that you had that discipline i understand where you're coming from when you say that you know 75 hard with this discipline i feel like if i put it to different structures of my life it will improve pete as a whole yeah um and i agree with that the only thing i thought of i watched this kevin hart podcast um with uh it was joe rogan and uh one thing that's been sticking with me a lot lately is I don't start things and not finish them. Mm -hmm. it, that, that's been ringing in my heart. And so even if, like, I was telling Pete, you know, part of what I do is, like, Friday afternoon at 2.30 when everyone's taken off, my job site was dirty because the guys wanted to leave early. And, and uh, if you don't watch every baby step, you'll find a bunch of dirty shit. So I swept the job site for two and a half hours Friday afternoon before I left work. And uh, halfway through, I'm sweeping, and I'm like, dude, all right, this is good. This is good enough. Someone walks in here. The client walks in during the weekend. It's good enough. But then that kind of clicked in my head where it's like, you don't start something and just not finish it. So, mm -hmm. like, at one point, there was an inspirational part of you two and a half, three weeks ago. It's like, I'm going to start 75 hard and not do it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and now there's a side of you saying, okay, well, I don't necessarily need to do 75 hard. I could do, I could do this. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm torn a little bit because I know, as like I just said two minutes ago, as a whole, Pete Costa would benefit more from this. But what is that in telling your internal, internal being, right, right, of starting things and not finishing them? You yeah. Know? So, um, I, and I do agree with that. Um, <clears throat> if I was gonna just like now take a week off and then start something different, I would feel a little worse. Um, but I'm almost, I'm almost like doubling down, you know, like I feel like I'm sort of taking a harder route, to be honest, um, in, in my perspective. So I don't feel too bad about it. I'm trying to get down to like the deepest psychology of it, like what internal being is, is turning you in one direction other than the other, right? Is mm -hmm. the, the internal being of like... I want this faster now, or is it the internal being of this doesn't make logical sense? Um, and the only thing I, I, that I'm trying to compare it to in my head is like, so say you said I'm giving myself 75 days to, to uh, invest in a tattoo shop and, <clears throat> and get my you know own commercial space, right? Mm -hmm. 20, 20 days into that, you are booming on it, right? You're going really fucking hard on it. But at that time, you get calls for the next five weeks for home calls. You're booked out every single day. Mm -hmm. Do you lean back on the money you could be making that month? Or do you lean into, listen, I gave myself 75 days to, to, to do this goal. Or I have the money over here that is cash. You know what I'm saying? So, And to the, the honest answer, I think, as I look at both scenarios and if, I, I see which one makes more sense and I'm okay with deviating, from, deviating the plan. from the plan. If this one makes more sense, yeah. if there is more money on the table here and then this isn't going to go anywhere, yeah. you know, if I'm passing up $25,000 of work here because there's all these house calls and then I can come back to the shop over yeah. here with now a pocket full of $25,000 and maybe the shop will be that much better mm. because I've got a pocket full of extra money that I wasn't going to have before to put into the shop, then, okay, yeah, maybe I didn't stick to the plan, but maybe the plan's going to be twice as good now because I, I deviated from it, which you've given that advice on the podcast before. We're like, don't be afraid to deviate from yeah. the plan because sometimes th shit doesn't go according yeah. to plan. And that's sort of how I feel right now. We're like, I'm not giving up. I'm sort of going, okay, I feel like I've got this discipline and this structure sort of figured mm -hmm. out. And how can I make it more efficient, yeah. you know, and sort of, 
I can't think of the word that I want right now, but like, how can I optimize yeah. this, this routine that I've developed? Yeah. Um, and just to say, guys, I, I actually agree. I'm just playing devil's advocate. No, no, I get Pete, it. I you know, know. Um, because these are sometimes the internal battles I have. Like I was telling Pete, I'm really disciplined and structured with 75 hard right now too. And I really need to be allocating time to study for my licensing for general contracting and whatnot. And, and, uh, but I do all the 75 hard stuff. So I'm torn at it too, because if I allocated at least an hour to an hour and a half every day of what the other things are, and I allocated that towards studying, then that's a lot of time. Um, and time is something that, you know, you can never gain back. So it's, it's tough, but this 75 hard for me, I think is my last two rods, the last, you know, hopefully chip away at this little bitch voice. And then he's hopefully knocked out for good. Uh, because I think that's really graduating to I control my thoughts and my actions and um, whether it's disciplined in your marriage or disciplined in your work or disciplined in your fitness and your health um, you know ultimately I believe that you're the happiest and the most successful when you are that way um, when when you don't mind saying no because it's it's not what you really want you know, and, and I think that's where, where like 75 hard is valuable and why the, you can't deviate from the yeah. program is important in the first steps of it, because until you have that discipline and that structure ironed out, you shouldn't be allowed to no. deviate from it because no. that's where all of a sudden now you're giving yourself breaks, yeah, you know, yeah. or you're, you're giving yourself that bitch voice a chance to like, mm -hmm get the easy way out, you know? Um, but I can say confidently that that's not what I'm doing here. I'm honestly just allocating my time more wisely and using it to my advantage, yeah. you know? Like, I... My body isn't designed for two workouts a day, you know? Yeah. And it never has been, you know? I've got really good genes... Well, I've got really good genes. I'm fortunate that, you know, like my metabolism is nuts. I build muscle really quickly. I burn the food that I eat really quickly. Yeah, I get it, Pete. I get it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm like, I weigh nothing right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily a good thing at the moment, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you come eat with me for a week, big boy. <laughs> but, uh, I, I just know that if I, if I take that the same principles that I've developed over the last few months of applying this discipline and this structure and put it towards focusing on the goals that mm -hmm. I actually have for myself, it'll be that much more powerful. Yeah. But it's because I spent the last six months or so really honing in on discipline and structure yeah. in my life that I'm able to know that I can hold myself accountable yeah. to those things. But if you're a person that doesn't feel like you have that discipline and that structure then maybe doing 75 hard and not giving yourself the allowance to deviate from it is necessary. Yeah. You know, like I don't think 75 soft is necessarily okay for everyone to do because you might come up with a list that's real fucking easy for yourself to accomplish yeah. and then you're not getting yourself anywhere, you know? Um, so there's sort of a fine line. Yeah. It's just, I'm, I'm good at that self evaluation yeah. and, uh, I feel pretty confident at the moment good. that I'm making the right choice. Good. It's so facto. Um, listen, I want to talk about one more thing, kind of uh, paralleling to that weird discipline type thing in your life. You know, I, I want to speak on uh, something that got me a little riled up yesterday on Instagram. Um, and I know there's opposing views to it, but uh, it was talking about kids, like a, from a parent's perspective, like what to do if your child is overweight. And uh, with what I believe is very... I think parenting and what's getting pushed is so much like, love your child, love them, love them, love them, love them. Yes, I, I'm going to love my kid. Mm. But if you don't install any type of discipline in your kid's life of sometimes, no, you, you can't do that, or no, you, you know, or why? Because I say no. Remember that when we were kids, when you asked your parents, why are you saying no? And they just said, because I said it. Yeah. Now there's always got to be a reason or an excuse yeah. or this or that. So I'm going to be very disciplined where, like, listen, no, or, or that's not happening. Or 
I'm going to be real with my kid. And like my parents, my entire life, listen, I knew my situation, my weight, my entire life. I tried diets. I tried this. I tried that. You know, I was always trying because I felt so insecure. Uh, but now like the advice is if your kid is big, then tell them that big is beautiful and they are beautiful and they are happy being big. Yeah. And that's the identity of like, I guess if you drive home to someone so much, from my fat perspective, when I am my biggest or fattest, I am so uncomfortable that I could not fathom someone my size or even bigger than me being like super comfortable in any position, you yeah. know? And not be super self-conscious. And that doesn't mean that you can't be still the funny guy or, or really whatever with it. But it's always in the back of your mind as a big person or someone who just doesn't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I would never want to look at you and say, hey, I know you feel uncomfortable. Stay that way, though. And you should be happy uncomfortable. Because then they're going to start dictating that, you know, I hate my job. Well, my job is fun i'm gonna stay uncomfortable you yeah. know because i defined it as fun no if it's unfun or the kid is unhealthy you have to tell them hey you are unhealthy now i'm not going to go off the bmi scale of 1972 where basically if you're not a toothpick then you're overweight yeah but i'm going to say listen you're you know you're 10 years old and you're you know 150 pounds Buddy, you know, and a good way for me every year playing football growing up was the weight scale because I would push the line of that every year, like getting on the scales. I would have to lose like five, 10 pounds every year for football so I could play. But it was kind of a check of like, okay, at least I'm not like where I can't even walk, yeah. you know? And, um, and we were very real with that. So I'm just kind of concerned that with redefining everything and, and not shooting straight with facts and this and that. And I think... Also, if you're letting your kid get really big and unhealthy, it's neglect. I think as a parent, that's that's literally making right. your, you know that's allowing your child just to become physically unhealthy. Yeah. We're so worried about mental health that physical health is just going right out the window. Yeah. And um, and trust me, his mental health will be fucked in my opinion if physically he is super unhealthy. Mm -hmm. um, so that that was just my opinion. I want to throw out on that. Yeah. And uh, and that's coming from a kid who is basically obese his entire childhood. So, you know, again, we all have different perspectives, but I know a lot of other big people that felt the same fucking way, you know? Um, so, yeah, so Pete, um, you know, the only other thing that I've been really resonating with as far as, you know, sometimes I say real truths on here is the raspberry thing. I, can't, <laughs> I really can't get over it. Yeah. Um, guys... Really think about it, you know, and if if it's just a Tuesday and you got five, I've stopped buying them. I stopped buying them, too. And um, I love them. Like well, they're, I, they're they are delicious. amazing. They are amazing. But, you know, let's be honest here. I, I don't know how they're... The, if they're not throwing them raspberries out every night at Publix and redoing them... <laughs> Because the day I get those raspberries, yeah, I got I got T minus 17 hours to eat those raspberries, <laughs> yeah. or they are mush. Right. So what are they spraying on them, dude? Yeah. What are they spraying on them? And, and how and, are they harvesting them? And unless they're harvesting them in like West Palm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> or they're harvesting them in like super far places. So these are like two and a half month old raspberries. No chance. Uh -oh, no, chance <laughs> no chance. No chance. No chance. And I think on the patching, they should put may dissolve. You know, <laughs> you know dissolvable raspberries. Yeah. And you want to talk about how fake the fruit industry is. Remember cotton candy grapes? They still are a thing. Yeah. Okay. What? Those are good. Because that makes me think, are all fruits artificially flavored? Are those artificially flavored? If you could fra flavor a, a grape like a cotton candy, maybe oranges are just orange flavored. <laughs> <laughs> cotton candy joking? grapes are so good. Maybe apples are apple flavored apples. Damn. Right? Yeah. And how are they not just... Like, we'll see pictures, and they'll do, like, the tourism thing and, like, apple orchards. But where are they mass-produced? <laughs> right? Where are they mass-produced? How are Granny Smiths that fucking perfect? You ever seen a real fucking apple, Pete? Mushy, old. It's like oranges, bro. You know the navel oranges in Publix? Yeah. I had an orange tree. That bitch came out like old grandpa balls, dude. <laughs> and these navel oranges are like softballs. Yeah. You know? Really good oranges. Dude, I think pineapple's not even on my top three. No? No. I think oranges. I think 
Uh, bananas are pretty good. Yeah, bananas are good. Bananas are pretty good. And then I think uh, maybe grapes. Yeah? Blackberries, too. Yeah, I eat a lot of blackberries. Blah, blah. I, I go through one of them a little... Con- First off, <laughs> blackberry industry. Why are you giving me a little little guy here? <laughs> yeah. The one handfulers. Mm-hmm. Um, and, dude, ra- they're pretty expensive if you really think about it. Like yeah, It's like five bucks for that little container. Yeah, it's like... That's like it's 50 one serving. Cent- that's like 50 cents a blackberry. <laughs> yeah. You get like eight blackberries in there. Yeah, they're talking about gas numbers. <laughs> yeah. Where are the blackberry numbers at? Yeah. You know, because that's pretty ridiculous, yeah. dude. It's like plywood. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I stretch out a few of them blackberries. Let's start harvesting blackberries, dude. Yeah, dude. Uh, Gabby should start growing them in her uh, garden. Yeah, her garden. <laughs> <laughs> that has plants. You bought that tomato on there. Dude. That was right. pretty funny. Shout out to my sister, my Romana. Um, she had a... Listen. Did you build the box for There's her? two respects of gardening. There's the, the gardening respect of I bought the seed. Yeah. And there's a bo- gardening respect of I bought the whole ass plant, basically <laughs> with a baby tomato on the plant. <laughs> yeah. I planted it, and now it's a real baby tomato, you know? Yeah. You know, there's different, you know, respects to it. You Did know? she buy the seeds or she bought the plants? Like, if you could roller skate, that's cool. If you could Healy, <laughs> you're pretty good, you know? So the fact that, I mean... Oh, they sprayed it down for a week, and now it's a tomato, and it got a little sun. But if you made that from the seed, yeah, dude, like that's crazy. They bought plants though, and planted the plants. Planted the plants, dude. Uh, yeah. Mature plants, and they already have roots and stuff. And right. uh, I would think it would be super alpha to plant a tree as a seed. Yeah, that'd then, be cool. And then watch it grow. How long know? do you think it takes to grow a tree? About ten years, maybe. <laughs> 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 Could you know, be you know, 50, it's, actually. You know it's pretty beta. What? Dry fit. Dude, dry fits for betas, dude. <laughs> um that's gonna be a shirt, by the way. Yeah. Um, Hopefully my, you can still pull up that picture. Shout somehow. out my brother in law, I'll post the picture. Um he just had some cotton cotton pants, dude, and cotton out here in South Florida. Cotton holds heat in a golf round. <laughs> yeah, and dude. his balls must have been at an internal <laughs> internal temperature of like one oh two. Um so he's wearing he was wearing not dry fit, but then uh, I took a picture of it and it's pre alpha, you know. <laughs> like, uh, so then I thought, is dry fit for betas? Yeah. Uh, do you think dry fits for betas? Uh, no, nah, no, no. It's it's kind of a smart move. Yeah, but sometimes the beta move is smart, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with like beta move is not punching a dude in the face who just said you're a pussy. But if alpha move is punching them in the face. Yeah, sure. Not really the smartest decision. Two different things we're talking about, though. Yeah, about the same. <laughs> and the material of your pants and <laughs> confrontation. You might be right. You know? I'm wearing some dry fit shorts right now, so I wasn't going to call so myself. So I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to shut the fuck up. Which, by the way, when was the last time you ever saw my thighs? Dude, you got nice thighs. <laughs> They're really white. But you I, walked up today in those shorts, and I said, mm, you got some nice thighs. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you need to show off them wheels a little more, dude. <laughs> I mean, he's got little thighs, but they're nice. Yeah, you know. But I got, I got, uh, we're talking like tires here. I got 32s on me, you know, <laughs> with no ass. Uh, <laughs> so I've been working on it. A lot of, lot of glute bridges, a lot of, uh, you know, hip extensions. I look like I'm fucking at the gym all the time. <laughs> you do the machine? Oh, uh, dude, all the time. Yeah. And then I squeeze up. And, I, and here's the thing, dude. I use, like, the painful face when I work out. Like, the, you know. <laughs> What's the face? <laughs> and dude, so I'll be at the top of a glue bridge on the machine. I'll make eye contact with someone. I'm like, Ugh. but squeezer, and I'm shaking. Dude, my legs are shaking. I'm like, yeah. and sometimes I talk to myself like, you hold, you hold. <laughs> you know, it literally looks like I'm trying to hold back a nut, dude. And, and uh, some people look away. Some people keep looking at me in the eye. <laughs> you know, I was like, I tell you where my temperature's at. <laughs> Um, but uh, oh, to used to la buns, um, and I'm growing it, dude. <laughs> yeah, That's good. kind of my my impossible mission. Yeah. Sometimes I have like uh, bucket list things, you know. That I, I remember you do. saying at the beginning of 75 hard, like your goal for the 75 hard is to grow your butt. Get some buns, dude. Because yeah. if that happens, uh, coming from just a lower back and upper thigh, because um, that's all my ass is. It's literally inverted. Um, <laughs> then, uh, dude. If I if I was a homosexual, no one would want to pound me, you know. No one want to. No one would want to break my back. I would have to be leading. 
yeah. charge. Yeah. Um, not <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> but I never thought about it that way, dude. Yeah, I couldn't even swing. You know? Yeah. I, they got nothing to hit. Man. Like breaking bones. Um, <laughs> fuck, we're gonna cut that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> guys. Um, that was a fun. That was a fun. That time. was good, dude. Was really I missed good. the boys only episodes. Yeah, it was a perfect amount of time. Uh, we are doing great, guys. I love you. If you reached out for me on my birthday, which isn't even yet. Yeah. Whatever. If, um, if you're watching this on the day it comes out, it's on Wednesday. It's so. on Wednesday. Yes. Hey, thank you. I love you. We love you guys. Thank you guys for watching, listening, viewing, and subscribing. If you have not done that yet, please do. We will see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. But I've been nice, I getting money, I'm on my suck again. Tryna stack a little dub, tryna catch a 